Adam Tysher with us, ESPN.com. He covers the Chiefs. Uh, we watched the uh, draft with great interest last week. The Chiefs get the receiver they coveted in the first round, trading up to get Xavier Worthy out of Texas. They traded up again in round two to get the offensive tackle uh, they wanted as well. Uh, everybody's saying that's a pretty successful draft, especially for a team that picks as low as the Chiefs do. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, it's got to be more than just those two guys. I mean, they've got to get some more players out of this draft. That's kind of where they are with the salary cap. They can't uh, spend a whole lot on bringing players in, so they have to do pretty well in the draft. But, uh, you know, I I think Worthy will be a pretty good player for them. Um, I I know they were really convicted that he was the best of that group of wide receivers, uh, that they could have had any of several guys and, and waited till 32. They wouldn't have had to trade up. But they went ahead and did it anyway because this was the guy they wanted. So, um, you know, they uh, they they uh, spent a lot of time researching these guys, and I think um, in this case they got it right. Now the tackle, we'll have to see. You know, young guy, a lot of development yet, um, but um, there seems to be a lot of ability there. We'll see if he's the uh, player that uh, they think he is. But, uh, yeah, so far um, it, it's definitely uh, – I think they they matched it up with uh, their positions uh, pretty well, what they needed. So, um, you know, we'll see. But uh, I, I think that this has a chance to be a pretty good draft for them. So with, with Worthy and, and Hollywood Brown, how different do you think the offense might look next season? Do you think it'll be frequent downfield throws, or do they use those guys for home run opportunities and kind of stay with the possession-type uh, receiving core that – they've had in the past no that that's the idea is to open that up a little bit you know i don't know if it'll ever go back to what it was early in patrick mahomes's career you know that was crazy stuff they were uh that was crazy stuff they were doing back then but i you know the idea was to open it up a little bit and um you know not only downfield but get these guys the ball in space and let them uh use their speed that way too so uh um, I, I can see this going a lot of different ways, but um, definitely I think it's a, a more a, a definitely a, 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 a group of wide receivers that uh, gives the, the opposing defenses more to think about than last year's. We're talking uh, with Adam Teicher, ESPN.com. He covers the Chiefs. So I don't think we've talked with you uh, in depth at all about the situation with the stadiums for both the Royals and the Chiefs, but yeah. it sounds like uh, governmental agencies are starting to get more and more involved. We do, it, It's hard to get a feel uh, for what may happen. It sounds like mm-hmm. there's a possibility that one of the franchises could be uh, located on the Kansas side and that that franchise would maybe be more likely to be the Chiefs. Is that within the realm of possibility in your mind? Oh yeah, I think once this um, this referendum a month or so ago got voted down, um, I, I definitely think it's possible the Chiefs could go there. Particularly if you know they're talking, to, they're giving them a, a, a basically a free stadium. I, I think the Chiefs would jump at that. I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. I, you know, everything being equal, I think their preference would be to stay at Arrowhead Stadium, but. Um, doesn't sound like things might be equal anymore. So if they're not, uh, yeah, I could definitely see them going to the Kansas side of the state line, no doubt. I was going to go back to the field. Uh, I, I'm not as well versed on that. I've read some stuff about it, but I was going to ask you: uh, Is the Chiefs' roster? Do you think it's pretty much set? Do you think there's any work they have to do in free agency, whether it's you know now or closer to the season? How do you think they feel overall? Yeah, they they seem to be in wait and see mode right now. I, I think they're pretty happy with how things are, but um, yeah, they'll look at some of their young guys, and if they feel like they're not going to be ready when the season starts, I think they'll try to make a move. I'm wondering about uh, wide receiver. Um, if um, you know, if that is that group deep enough? I mean, they, there's a lot of question marks there. They got a new guy in Hollywood Brown and a rookie in Xavier Worthy and a guy with some what looks like to be deep legal troubles and Rasheed Rice. And and then they got two guys who were really uh, big disappointments last year for them, and Sky Moore and Kadarius Toney. I mean, is, is that deep enough? I mean, do they, they need somebody else there? I, I, I think they'd feel better if they had another guy there, but right now they seem to be willing to look at what they've got and, and uh, 
go with it for now at least. Uh, you know, offensive tackle is another spot to look at if uh, they don't they decide either they're two young guys isn't ready to be a starter. Uh, running back, I mean, they've got I see a Pacheco and Clyde edwards Lair, but they've really needed their depth, and they don't really have a third guy uh, right now, so that might be another spot they go for. So uh, those are just some of the spots where they might decide uh, they need some help um, uh, even either now or before camp starts. Adam Teicher with us from ESPN.com. Obviously what the Chiefs did last year once they got to the postseason was incredibly impressive going on the road and winning three games and then winning the Super Bowl. Who is best suited? Uh, it, to me, I, I think we're going into this season – with the Chiefs as a fairly clear-cut favorite again in the AFC, although there's some very good teams in the AFC. Who do you think has made the biggest strides in closing the gap? Well, I, I think Cincinnati's the team I'm looking at. They certainly uh, you know, didn't have a great season last year, but there were some reasons for that, injuries being one of them. You know, assuming they can get a full season out of Joe Burrow, um, you know, that that's the team that's matched up well, that uh, has had the formula for beating the Chiefs. So, um, uh, you know, that that's kind of the team that I have my eye on. They're, they're uh, a pretty talented group over there. So, if you're asking me who maybe the Chiefs' biggest um, competition is in the AFC, I would go with, right now, I would go with uh, – Cincinnati, but I've got my eye on Houston, got my eye on Baltimore. Um, I'm intrigued by what's going on with the Chargers right now. They they seem to finally have a direction uh, where, that they didn't have before. So, uh, going to be interesting. Going to be another fun season, no doubt about it. So we were talking earlier. Did you happen to see or hear about Patrick Mahomes on WWE television, uh, lined up with Logan Paul and playing basically a villain in Kansas City? <laughs> No, I, I saw the uh, the video clip of that. That was pretty funny. Yeah, there, no doubt. Uh, um, hey, uh, whatever that guy does, t- come touches, uh, you know, it turns to gold in this town. So uh, it was pretty funny, wasn't it? It was. It was funny. So tell us a, a little bit about uh, Patrick Mahomes off the field, because we certainly get a taste of him on the field. Uh, how much is he around Kansas City in the off season? How much has he seen in public? Uh, just, just those kinds of things, Adam. Um, you know, he's around some, not a lot. I mean, he's got, uh, uh, you know, he spends a lot of his off season in uh, Texas. But they they started practice now this week, so he he's come back, and uh, so he'll be here most of the time. Um, you know he'll uh, he'll be here most of the time between now and the, the time camp starts. Um, in terms of uh, how often he's uh, around town, I, I've never seen him outside of the stadium, so uh, maybe that says more about me than him. But uh, um, you know he'll he'll pop up at a Royals game or a, a Sporting Kansas City game or something like that every now and then, a, a current game every now and then, and uh, you know so he gets around a little bit, but. Um, you know, I know he'd like to do a little more, but uh, when you're when you're him, you you, you have to limit your uh, your exposure, I guess. And then before we let you go, we saw the extension for Travis Kelsey. There's been a, some yeah. banter, some talk that yeah, he's not going to play much longer. But uh, certainly with this extension that takes him through four more years, it looks like he's good for at least a couple, don't you think? Yeah, and, and th- he's actually. Um, only signed through two more years. The extension wasn't really an extension. It was just they ripped up the two years that were existing on his contract and gave him two new years, which uh, some people, including myself, interpreted as uh, an extension, but it was really just uh, 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 redoing the, the contract for 24 and 25. So he signed through two years, and I think that's the intention for him to play this out, and then they'll see. I mean, I can't imagine he would play – you know, he'd be um, going to be turning 37 in that season in 2027 uh, or 2026 if he's still playing by then. So uh, can't imagine he would, but uh, he's already uh, you know done done some pretty good things for a guy of his age. So uh, wouldn't put it past him. But I, I think that is the plan: is that he, he's going to play two more and then uh, he'll be moving on. All right, Adam. Always appreciative appreciative of your time. Thank you. We'll talk with you soon. 
Hey, good stuff, guys. Talk to you then.